Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. It's time to have a look at the news today, when it comes to War Thunder, with the first piece being about the Cosmonauts Day. Usually, in War Thunder, they do celebrate it in different ways. You'll see that the To Go To Battle button has turned into launch, which is kind of cool. There's usually a rocket that actually uh, fires off in the hangar at some point, which is always nice. And also, we get a decal, and this time, we got another one. So, this is the Off We Go decal. It is available from the 12th of April until the 15th of April, and all you got to do is play three battles using USSR aircraft at rank three or higher to receive it. And uh, basically the reason why is since the beginning of time, humanity has dreamed of conquering the sky, and having reached it, we turned our sights even further. On the 12th of April 1961, a manned spacecraft with test pilot Yuri Gagarin on board orbited the Earth for the first time. In honor of this event, World Aviation and Cosmonautics Day is celebrated on the 12th of April. Kind of a sad story about Yuri, it's well worth looking into it, but at least in War Thunder, you can celebrate it with a decal. One of the funny things that happened also was with It's Fixed. Uh, they basically did an It's Fixed and then the large changelog which we went through, and then later on in the day, they actually did a smaller one with update 2.35.1.43, which kind of came out of nowhere, and uh, therefore I didn't cover it. There's been a few little odd bugs in the game. It seems like with the spading, you know how supposedly they fixed it? Well, every time you unlock a modification now, it says your vehicle is spaded even though it isn't. So, they're halfway there. Don't really know what in the last update made it break, but at least um, it's slowly but surely getting back to normal. In 2.35.1.43, the first thing was with the aircraft, and there was a bug where the RWR indication on the MFD did not take into account the scale of the interface elements, and that has been fixed. This led to, for example, the name of the illuminating radar to overlap with the central element of the RWR indication, which obviously isn't very good. One of the things that's going to have to happen with RWRs, which we were actually discussing on stream the other day, is the idea that a lot of them are going to have to be kind of improved, so therefore it doesn't follow all of the different um, kind of missiles, no matter how far away from you that they are. If we have a situation where everything is trapped on the map all the time by the RWR, it can become incredibly confusing. And this is something that I've found a lot, especially since more and more missiles are being fired at high tier air. Whenever I play something like an F-16 or play something similar to that, you have a situation where you're basically sat there wondering what's coming at you. And it turns out the missile has been fired from across the map and it's going to be nowhere near you. There's going to have to be some kind of distance indicator or some way of tuning it so it only focuses on around your vicinity. A bug where the target tracking marks shown by radar could not be, or sorry, could be displayed in the kill camera after the loss of an aircraft has been fixed too. So therefore, you know, that's just another simple bug. And uh, it will be kind of interesting once active radar homing missiles come. Obviously, they're coming next update. They've already talked about them coming. The RWRs and specifically the radars are going to be so important in these setups, uh, just like they kind of are now with a lot of the missiles going around. There's going to be a lot more people hugging the floor and who can blame them with all of these crazy missiles flying around. Then, in ground vehicles, a bug where turning off the search radar could lead to a loss of the lock from the tracking radar or IRST has been fixed, which of course is good because it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Both of those features are kind of two separate things. And also at the same time, it's important to be able to turn off your search radar if you're using your tracking radar sometimes and especially your IRST because you don't want to be noticed by whatever cast plane is coming in. I've got to be brutally honest with you. Playing between the kind of 9-7 to 10-3 area has been hell quite a lot of the time. Like, I spaded recently the T-55M, which was actually in a pretty nice place. Uh, then uh, we did the Leopard 2A4, the Radkampfwagen, also the CV-90-30 Finn. All of these vehicles felt very good, but I tell you what, the cast elements around these VRs are taking over again. 
And the reason is, is because pretty much all of the AAs that you can use, especially on the higher echelon, were nerfed into the ground. So now you're basically sat there with some pretty rough vehicles to be able to defend yourself. It has been nice playing the Biaz again though, and I will continue to. We're going to be spading the Leopard 2A7V on the weekend, which should be quite fun. But the main thing to understand is Cass, especially those Biaz, is getting very rough to deal with. In naval vessels, the PR-183 BM-21, a bug that caused only one rocket to replenish after using up all of the rocket launcher ammunition has been fixed, which is kind of odd, and then also a bug that caused the replenishment progress to not be shown on the icon of the corresponding weapon when replenishing torpedo tubes, rocket launchers, and also depth charge launchers that were not fully empty has been fixed, which is good as well. There was, or there is, I should say, an issue with ground as well where that kind of happens with smoke grenades, where the kind of reload mechanic is not actually fully there. It doesn't show it properly, um, and that pretty much sucks. There was also a bug where the bomb replenishment timer on reconnaissance aircraft was reset when switching to a ship and back. That's also been fixed, so overall pretty good. There was, There is a reconnaissance plane that also, at least for me, wasn't working properly. Um, the Italian reconnaissance plane, when you're actually directing it, it's fine, but the moment that you switch back to your ship, it literally just goes straight up into the air and then just plonks into the sea. So whoever's driving that one is not really interested in survival, which uh, is definitely a bit rough. Recently, I've been thinking more and more about the roadmap, because one of the items in the roadmap I think is super important, which is the splitting of BRs of aircraft in their different game modes. It's been one of the things that should have been done a long time ago, but we were told for many years couldn't be done. So it's nice to be in a situation where it can be done, and hopefully will fix quite a lot of vehicles. There is a ton of vehicles in Aerialistic which really struggle. You know, the A4 is actually one of them in most scenarios, where it can't really do anything in many different cases. But also at the same time, one of the major reasons for this is actually its rank. Its rank is too high and therefore it can't take off. Oh, sorry, it, it has to take off and doesn't spawn in the air. So it can't get to bases before anything else. The same thing happens with the A7, for example, where it just is in a rough place because of that simple fact. And I wonder if not just them looking at, you know, differentiating BRs based on game mode, maybe they could also revisit that area. There are plenty of vehicles that really struggle in the game because they just can't get to their objectives first. The A7, the A4s, and of course the mighty Votors, which are just in a horrific place at this moment in time. I feel like there's been enough time to kind of go past, and there's been surely enough data to kind of show a massive change in how these vehicles have done and how they've been going around. And we'll have to see, I suppose, if that ever changes. I hope it does, because, yeah, there's so many vehicles which are just in an awkward place right now. Maybe that's by design, um, because, you know, they've been working up to this kind of meta-shifting change where a lot of these aircraft are going to change in BRs based on their mode. But because they've added so many of these strike aircraft with so many different capabilities, but because they're hampered by the BRs that they have to be at because of specific game modes, maybe it doesn't change. Maybe it's exactly the same. Who knows? It's going to be a long road for this type of thing, and I'm sure many people have noticed in ground that there are certain BRs which are just hell. 9-3 at the moment is one of them, because you get constantly uptiered into the 10-3 premium bracket, which also has a bunch of planes coming at you as well, and you don't have anything, unless you're in very specific nations, to be able to deal with those threats coming in, and it's not very fun. Even at 8-7, if you end up in a 7-7 battle with stuff like the A-4, with three or four, well, three guided bombs, you're going to annihilate everything that is around. It's not very fun, it sucks, and at the end of the day, will not really improve until they start moving these BRs around. And since we haven't had a BR change in a while, maybe soon we'll get one of those, maybe it'll help a little bit, or maybe we'll just have to wait till the next major update. 
meaning that the frustrations will increase and the negativity will spiral. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Tulio Ponticovo, Brendan Quinn, Carrion Crow, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, Wartinder, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Martinez, B. Young, Alan Hacker, Ozzy Panzer, Liam Shear, Opium Prime, Lafouche, Cam Arslan, Uncle Bean, and Derek R. for supporting the channel.